everybody, welcome to my review of the Triumph Trident. It is with thanks to Triumph themselves, UK, uh, that I've had this bike on loan for a couple of weeks to make a few videos on, which I've done, you can see those on my channel, and also to give you this review of this bike. As I say, I've been using this as my daily bike uh, for the past two weeks nearly. Uh, you know, I've got to know it, I've got to use it, I've got to understand it, and I think I can now give you the review to let you know what this bike's all about, and is it any good? Obviously, this bike has been designed for the A2 market. Uh, it's the cheapest Triumph that Triumph make. It has got 80 brake horsepower, so it's designed to fit perfectly in that bracket where you can restrict it for your A2, but when you de-restrict it, after you get your full license, it's still got enough power there that you could actually keep this as your daily running bike and not necessarily need to fully upgrade to anything over 100 brake horsepower or something like that. Depends on you, depends on what you're after, but this is definitely in that place where this is enough for the UK roads, full stop. Now, obviously, this isn't in its A2 form at the moment. This is in its full-powered version. Uh, if you want to try it as an A2 bike, I'm not sure if they've got demos available when they're restri pre-restricted. Don't even have to look into it. COVID's changed a lot of things. But anyway, let's just talk about the bike. So, looks and design. I actually really like the look of this bike. It's different. It's pretty different to everything else. Um, the tank, to me, really looks like a modernised Bonneville, especially with these panels. So, it's like, are they going for a modern Bonneville look with this? Don't know. Uh, it's from my understanding this frame is not used on a street triple or anything else like that. It is its own new frame. Of course, it's using a 660cc triple engine, the same engine that was used in the old street triple S, if you're wondering. Of course, it's got double discs on the front, single disc on the rear. Uh, the suspension on this is Showa and it is not adjustable uh, at all. The rear it has got some preload adjustments on it, but the front has got no adjustments at all from what I can see. Uh, and that's something I'll get to talk about when we get out on the road. There isn't actually a huge amount to tell you about it because it looks like this and there isn't a lot more to it. You know, it's not got loads of bells and whistles and all those sorts of things, so it's quite nice. In fact, shall we quickly have a look at the controls uh, and then we can get out on the road because I'm starting to sweat. The dash on this is round and looks, you know, old school analog, but actually within it is two digital screens that give you lots of information, but not too much information. I really do like the way that the display set up. Fuel gauge is up here, miles an hour, revs over the top. You know, very, very simple. Uh, controls, obviously, clutch. These are your directional buttons to use for navigating the menus. You have your OK button when you're in menus, your indicator, horn, and the mode button. Uh, you know, together. It's a bit weird having them together, but I haven't hit the horn while trying to hit the mode button or anything. You've got your pass light here, but that also works as your high beam, low beam. As you can see, the light comes on, stays on. On the throttle side, we have the front brake, which has got a small adjuster on it, so you can change how far out it is. And this is fly-by-wire throttle, obviously, as you can see. Um, and we've got the kill switch starter here with the hazards underneath. As you can see, it's a very clean, nice-looking dash. Not a lot there to distract you. Just is what it is. This is very much just a bike. And that's a nice thing to see. As far as modes go, it has road and it has rain, and that's that. You can modify them, so you can turn off the ABS entirely, you can turn off the traction control entirely, but basically this has got two settings, road and rain. I feel like I'm forgetting stuff because this is so simple. Normally I have to go through all the different modes, mention all this, that and the other, and I'm like, I'm like have I forgotten something here? Um, 
Not really, it is what it is. It's a simple bike and that's an awesome thing. Oh, one thing I will show you for, for the lols is the toolkit on this bike. Um, the way you get the seat off, the key under here, as you probably imagined, and give it a good twist, and it does come off. Come on, there you go. Would you like to see the simplest toolkit in the world? <laughs> it is a single Allen one end and a uh, Phillips screwdriver on the other. That is it, that is your toolkit on this bike. I mean, okay, it might be handy for a, for a couple of things where you absolutely need to do stuff out on the road, but toolkits on bikes do make me laugh. It's like, this isn't designed to help you actually fix the bike at the side of the road. Let's give that a push to make it go down. Oh my God, it's so hot. Right, let's get on the road. Oh, by the way, normally I'd use a 360 camera to give you some third person views in my reviews. Well, I've got some videos on this bike doing that, but I'm not gonna do it on this one as an experiment and see what people think. Would you rather me use the 360, you know, shots as well or do you like the onboard only let me know in the comments let's get through a few things this is definitely a triumph even though it's the cheapest triumph they make it looks like a triumph it feels like a triumph the, the build quality and that sort of stuff and the finishes all feels exactly like any triumph i've ridden the only real difference is, is as i've said the lack of specs and extra bits and pieces on a bike that makes them cheaper but Amazingly, that also to me makes them better. Simpler bikes are better. As for ergonomics, this bike is quite small. Uh, for me, at six foot four, it's actually a little bit too small because my knees don't sit quite where they're supposed to back here on the sides of the tank. My knees touch the edges up here, which are, you know, not particularly comfortable to have your knees on. And it's not where your knees designed to be, but that's because I'm so much taller than most people. If you are shorter, this is actually not a bad bike. My other half, Reno, who is five foot four, uh, she sat on this and she's able to hold it upright, no problems. She isn't flat footing it by any means with both feet, but she's definitely got a, a comfortable stance on it. So if you're, uh, you know, around five, four, something like that, you can ride this bike and you'll probably find it better than I do because well, as I say, it's a bit small for me. And as for the seating position, it's very comfortable, nice and upright, great sort of, you know, how most nakeds tend to feel. That upright, more comfortable position, slightly lean forward, might be more if you're a bit shorter. I'm not sure how that works out. Uh, but yeah, very, very comfy. The seat's nice and comfortable. It's got a nice material on it. Uh, and I found that to be comfortable after a few hours of in being in the saddle. Sure, every now and then you want to get up to stretch your legs. Who doesn't after you know a couple of hours on a bike? But uh, it's definitely not like leg numbing or anything like that. The mirrors aren't bad looking, but what they do do is work very well. Uh, I can see they're out far enough that I can see very clearly, but not too far that they're a hindrance in traffic and they're not too high up or anything like that. So uh, pretty good there too. Even though this is quite a small bike, it is pretty heavy. It's 190 kilos wet, uh, which you know isn't that much in the grand scheme of what bikes can be. But for something that is, that's this small, it is noticeable when you're pushing it around you know, on the side stand. But once you're up and going, you really don't feel the weight in it at all. It's very, very nice. Well, I don't feel I've forgotten anything, so let's get on to the fun stuff, shall we? Performance, handling, and all that sort of stuff. So as I mentioned, this is using the 660cc triple engine from the Old Street Triple S, and it's a very nice engine. It's got a couple of oddities to it, which I'll talk about in a minute, but generally it is a good, fun revy engine that wants you to rev it out this bike responds far better to being up in the revs and you know and really sort of not even say aggressively ridden but you know you, you you control it you definitely tell it where to go That low down weight really does make this bike feel very planted and it lets you roll it from corner to corner. Oh, that's a good met time to mention the suspension. So the suspension is, it's, it's okay, it's pretty good, but I do wish it had some adjustability to it because at times it can feel both a little bit jiggly, uh, you know, if you're on a road and you feel like you're jiggling around, you get moved around a lot, but then at other times you hit a bump and it feels really firm, like really firm. Uh, so it's kind of a, a weird mix of the two. I don't mind it. It's fine on most roads. Uh, and once you're up to a certain, you know, a decent speed, you don't notice it so much, but there is this thing you kind of notice that it can be 
Well, let's just say the suspension is not necessarily the most sophisticated suspension, and it's not. It's uh, some, you know, some upside down showers with no adjustability on them at all. Brakes and ice. Right, see there, traction control was on. Second gear, not really trying that hard, and in the middle of the corner, I felt the engine just say, no, nope, and the traction control came in. I'm not in rain mode. And that's one of the things, it's one of the couple of things to do with this bike that I'm not the biggest fan of. Uh, but you can turn the traction control off, and you know, unless it's peeing with rain, this bike doesn't really need traction control. It's 80 brake horsepower, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. You can switch that off if you want to. Just just remember that it's off. But it is uh, one of the things I say. The traction control comes in a little bit too early for me, uh, and also it seems to get set off by bumps. That may have been what set that off, rather than the amount of power I was putting on. It might have been the bumpiness that I was going through. I have been over bumps without adjusting the throttle, and it set the uh, traction control off. So I don't know what that's all about. But it is. It's not too bad. It just. It's just a thing that happens occasionally. Thankfully, the ABS isn't over-intrusive that I've noticed on the front. So I'll show you what it's like getting up to 60. So I didn't fully gun it there, but you get an idea. Uh, the traction control kicked in again there, I noticed. Just gonna double check I'm not in rain mode. No, I am definitely in road mode. There is something about this bike though that is a bit weird uh, and my assumption is it's, it's some sort of anti-stall system and I've looked into it and the Triumph Tiger has got this built in but I haven't seen it mentioned for this bike but I guess it would make sense for an A2 bike where people are learning to ride maybe um, that they'd include that in this bike. Now what it is is it seems to raise the revs itself to stop the bike from stalling and sometimes it seems to get a bit confused by that and it ends up doing this sort of like and you end up getting sort of you know just rocked backwards and forwards for a second and then it stops it's a slow speed it doesn't really matter it's not like a safety issue it just feels a bit weird it's very hard to make it do it and it doesn't do it all the time the time it normally happens is when i'm in slow traffic you know change between first into second something like that and you'll just notice you get back on it will go As I can't make it do it right now, which is a good thing, uh, I will show you a little bit of footage of it doing it when I was in Portsmouth. Uh, so that low down in the revs weirdness was something that kind of put me off at first. When I first got onto this bike and did a 10 mile ride in 30 mile an hour roads, I was like, this feels a bit weird at slow speed. All of that, all of it goes away once you get up into the higher revs and you start riding it like it wants to be ridden. You know, it doesn't want to be all looked after and gently put the throttle on. No, it wants you to put big handfuls of throttle on and use it. You know, you can you can come down the box nice and sharply, put it into corners, pull itself out of corners. You see? And that's how I went from thinking, oh, I'm not so sure about this bike, to really enjoying it. It is a fantastic riding machine. When you want it to be right, when you're out on these sorts of roads, it's a forgiving bike to ride. It's got good brakes, as you can see here. It, it, it's, it's very stable, it's great. It really is a very good machine for people to learn to ride on. And when I say, you know, get better at their riding skills, not just be on the road, but actually learn to ride. So I really do only have those couple of complaints about this bike. The suspension feels a little bit basic at times, but a lot of the time it's absolutely fine. And you know, that comes along with getting one of the cheapest, well, all the cheapest drives that, that they've ever made. But I do feel like it could have had, you know, adjustables on it. It could have just had some basic adjustment to the forks and it would have really improved things and allowed you to tune it for your style of riding. And that low down fueling issue in, you know, at, at 
at crawling speeds almost or just you know first second speeds in town where it just gives you a little every now and then that's it beyond that it's absolutely fantastic and that goes to show why you really do need to ride a bike for a bit and get it in the right place and ride it the right way and get to know it build a rapport with it opposed to just jumping on something for 10 minutes and going nah it feels different i don't like it when the road hasn't got bumps and stuff in it the ride on this is superb it's lovely and smooth the engine's smooth not too many vibrations it's not too hot you know because we is a naked so we've got all that heat from the engine dissipating away now depending on what sort of rider you are i think what this bike offers unrestricted is as i say is enough it's fantastically usable power on the road if you want something rip roaringly fast then this may not be that because well it, it is 80 brake horsepower it can't have over 100 brake horsepower to start with because then it could never get restricted to a2 so it's got to by definition be a little bit you know slower than what else is in the range but usability wise it's absolutely great and as i say for learning on it's perfect. It's not the loudest bike. It probably could do with a, uh, a can if you like a bit more of an audible engine tone. It sounds nice running on the bike, but it's just not that loud. As a position in the market, I think, as I said, well, obviously this is aimed to be an A2 bike. But I think it's aimed to be a good all-rounder. You can commute on it. You could do, you know, distance on it. I'm not sure if that's going to be too up distance. I'm not sure if you can do, like, long, long touring because of how much, you know, luggage you can really get on this. But, you know, it's comfortable. You can get around. Um, commuting, obviously. It can even be a fun weekend bike. So, yeah, so the only place I see this not being its strongest is touring just because it's smaller stature and less power. So as I mentioned, your dash has got two little screens. Top one's for basically rev speed and all that sort of stuff. Gear position as well, gives you there. It's quite nice to have. And the bottom one basically gives you some additional information, such as how much fuel you've, uh, miles you've got left from what fuel you've got. The gauge is actually up the top here, but also what your average MPG is. Um, I'm currently, it says I'm getting around 70 miles to the gallon, but I'm doing like 35 mile an hour on a little country road. On the motorway, I saw it giving me numbers of like 99 miles to the gallon. But a much better figure I can give you is one of my patrons owns one of these bikes and he gets an average of 55 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. I don't imagine that he's uh, riding around like Miss Daisy all the time, so an average out of 55, that's good. clutch is nice it's one of these uh, assisted slippers so as you come down the box it's not going to jam up your rear wheel ah. <laughs> it's good fun it's good good fun so as I say it has got a slipper clutch as you can see there but the interesting thing is, it doesn't come with... Oh, this is muddy. Why did I come down here? Oh, well, <laughs> country road test. Uh, this doesn't come with the quick shifter as standard, but it does get the, the slipper clutch as standard, which is an interesting mix, you know, for, for a bike that clearly has been designed to have the quick shifter of the rest of the range from, um, from Triumph, and then them not to fit it. Well, I assume they wanted the price to be at a point that it couldn't be, and they went, right, we'll nip the quick shifter off it, uh, and then hopefully people will buy that as an optional extra and then they won't see that as a you know something in the uh, the the msrp or the rrp of the bike on the website uh it's, it's an optional extra but i would say even though i'm not the biggest fan of quick shifters um it it might be good to have it on here as it's got everything else that goes around with it in the triumph system and on the triumphs the quick shifters do actually work very nicely Aha. This is what this bike's good for, in my opinion. Country road, English country road blasting. Little back roads, blasting around in the sunshine, having fun. Sure, it will do all the other things you want it to do as well, but this feels like the home of this bike. You know, it, it doesn't need huge amount. Oh, road closed, apparently. That's a problem. You know, these sorts of roads don't need 160 mile an hour top speeds. Well, no road does in the UK, to be fair. Um, <laughs> You know, it doesn't need 150 brake horsepower or something like that. This is more than enough here. More than enough. 
and it makes it a lot of fun because you get to use the engine more. I've tried this out on the motorway obviously uh, and with its six-speed gearbox it sits at 70 miles an hour very comfortably, very comfortably as I say. It was giving an estimated sort of 100 miles to the gallon at that point so uh, yeah it's, it's good at that too. It's just a it's a very good all-rounder. It looks nice. It's not the most expensive bike out there. Obviously, it's not the cheapest bike either because it is a Triumph, and Triumph's got a little bit of an extra, a little cost to it. But um, so this guy go past. Now Triumph's got a little bit of a, an extra cost to it, but it's not bad at all. I think this is, is a very good deal of a bike. If you want to just go and get something that's nice and you're going to be happy with for a long time as a rider, uh, this is a good place. Uh, it's definitely, it's not as bone shaking as some of the other trance I've ridden, I'll definitely say that. Like some of the trance I've ridden, I'm mean, like, that's a bit, that's a bit much, man. This, not so much. If there is anything I've forgotten to mention you want to know, leave a comment below and I'll, I'll answer it for you. I, I honestly feel like I've forgotten stuff, but I don't think I have. I think I've answered all the stuff you're going to want to know. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button. I really would appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new here, or even if you're not new here and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'm so close to 100k now. Uh, it's very surreal. Uh, and if you'd like to help support this channel, like all the people at the end of the video, whose names go up the list, do, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a pound a month, basically. A quid a month, a miles bar a month. I don't even know how much a miles bar is. I haven't eaten one for years. But you know what I mean. <laughs> but it, that is the difference between me being able to make these, these videos and have this channel and not. It's to support the audience that make it possible. Without you, I am nothing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>